Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at graphs of logarithmic functions. Okay, now we're going to go back a step though and have a look at graph, uh, a graph of y equals x squared and y equals plus or minus root x. Okay, so if we've got x squared, we know it's going to look something like this. Okay, a nice parabolic shape for y equals x squared. Now, if we think about our y equals plus or minus square root x that we've seen in the past. Okay, it looks something like this. Okay, that may not be my best effort that I've ever done. So this part is the positive square root x. This is the negative square root x. Now, what's this got to do with our logs? Okay, well, the idea here is, remember, we know there's a link between squaring and square root. We know there's a link, okay? They're inverse operations. And we can see here, our graph basically looks the same. It's just been rotated around 90 degrees. Or in mathematical language, we say it's been reflected, okay, in this line, which is the line y equals x. Okay, so we say it's been reflected in that line, and that's what does that sort of rotation around. Okay, so now we need to think, okay, well, what do we know about logs? Okay, well, I actually know that y equals e to the x, and y equals log to the base e of x, they're inverses. Okay, we know they're inverses. Okay, or if you like, y, to the, uh, y equals a to the power of x, and y equals log to the base a of x, the inverses. It doesn't actually matter what that base is. Okay, the inverses. Okay, well, if the inverses, we, we should expect something similar to happen here with our graphs. And it does. Okay, so if we think about our exponential graph, we know it does something like this. Okay, we know it comes through like that, and that's at point 0.1. Okay, so that's our y equals e to the x. Now, if they're inverses, okay, which I just said they are, they should do the same thing with this reflection. This line y equals x. Okay, and that does. And what we find for our logs okay, is it's very similar. Okay, but it looks like this. Okay, so we know before for our exponentials that we had a vertical asymptote, sorry, a horizontal asymptote. Okay, for our x-axis, this time for our logs, we've got a vertical asymptote. Okay, and we can also tell that this is going to intercept our x-axis at 1. Okay, so it's that rotation around, okay, and we see that what were y-intercepts now x-intercepts, what were vertical asymptotes are now horizontal asymptotes. Same idea as what we've seen with our squares and square roots. Okay, but we need to see a bit more about our logs and what our graphs look like. So here we go. All right, and our properties of them. Okay, so here's our general one. Here's our basic one here, right? Okay, this is graphs of log to the base a of x, where a is greater than one, okay? So this is what we see. We see that we go through this point here, our x-intercept is at one. But we also have another point on our graph, which is a one. Okay, this is point A1, where A is our base, okay? Now our domain, now they're all our allowed X values, okay, what X values we're allowed to use, they're from zero up to infinity, but we'll use round bracket, remember that means that we don't include zero, okay, um, or round parentheses because uh, of our vertical asymptote there, okay? Uh, our range, which is our allowed y values, or really the y values we get out from um, something in our x values, that's all real numbers, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. There's no restrictions in our y values. We see we've got that vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Okay, we've got that um, value out for our y intercept, uh, sorry, x intercept at one, as I said, this other point here at a one. Okay, so this is our basic form of our graph. Okay. Uh, what happens though, if we say have a graph of log to the base a of nx? Okay, so we've got this multiplying value n here. Okay, well what we see, okay, is that's a dilation factor. Okay, and it squishes things up a little bit. We don't get a change in our vertical asymptote, 
okay, but we do get a change in our x-intercept, okay, or our x values really in this case, and we divide one by that number n, okay, and that'll give us our x-intercept, okay, and this point that was a1 is now a on n1, okay. So our x values to those two important points have just been divided by n, the y values haven't changed. Okay. Now nicely, our graphs of um, log to the base a of x take h plus k, guess what guys, it is exactly the same as all of our other functions. Okay. Our h moves it left and right, if it's a negative value in here, it moves it to the right, if it's a positive value in here, it moves it to the left. And our k value here, that's our vertical translation, that's moving it up and down. Okay, so putting those things together, okay, we see that we have a vertical asymptote, okay, and that's at x equals h, okay, because we moved across by h units. Okay, we also see our other point that was at a1, this point here was at a1, we'll now have to add our, um, sorry, I just realized I made a little mistake, okay, We've had to add our h value to that a, because we've moved it across, okay? But we also need to add our k value to that one. So that's why we're k plus one. Okay, so we've moved it across by h and up by k. Now, our x-intercepts, though, are not quite as nice. Okay, it's still doable, it's still fine, okay? And it still generalizes nicely, but remember what we're doing is really solving this equal to zero for our um, x-intercept, and when we do that, we find that our x-intercept occurs at a to the power of negative k plus h. Okay, that's gonna be where our x-intercept lies for this type of graph. Now, of course, if you were sketching one and didn't have a k value, that's fine. You just put k uh, is equal to zero here, or a to the power of zero is one. Okay, we know we usually go through one, so then we just move it across this h value. Okay, so it does work out quite nicely in the end. Okay. But we need to get to and do some examples of what's happening here. Okay, so I've got a few examples to have a look at. Okay, the first one is sketch y equals log to the base 2 of x take 3. Okay, so we need some axes. So we can see here that we have a base of 2, okay, and a horizontal translation of three units. So that's the first thing we need to do. Let's go our three units across. Okay, so we know that's at three. Okay, at this point we can really do a, a general sketch of it. Okay, and get things oops, going up. I need to curve that over a bit more. Okay, and get things happening here. Okay, so uh, we also know then that our, our value here that would have been uh, 2, okay, sorry, 1, sorry, our x and z would have been 1, it's now going to be, of course, 4, because we've moved it across, okay, and our other value, which is a1, okay, well, we know now that that's going to be a plus uh, h, so we're actually going to be 5, okay, because we're going to be 2 plus 3 is 5, so we're going to be going through 5, 1 is our other point that we know. Okay, at that point we're, we've got all the information that we need for this, okay, and we can say that that's uh, sketched, but just uh, for completeness, I know a lot of the questions in the textbook ask for like domain and range. Okay, so for this, our domain, because when we move to the right, it's gonna be three to infinity. Okay, doesn't really matter what we do vertically, Okay, it's not going to change our, our, yeah, our range at all, so it's still going to be negative infinity to infinity. Okay, we know we've also got that vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Okay, so our next one, we're going to sketch negative log to the base 10 of x plus 4. Okay, so we haven't actually said anything about what uh, negatives do, but we're going to see what happens here. Okay, so if we draw our axes in, okay, we can see that we haven't had a, a horizontal translation. Okay, so nothing is changing with our vertical asymptote. That's still at x equals zero. Okay, that hasn't changed. Okay, we know that we've been 
moved up by four units, but we'll also be, you know that we've got this negative value, which is going to be some sort of a reflection. Now, we think of what happens here. Okay, I take a value, okay, for x, a positive value for x, I sub it in, okay, here, but then it gets times by a negative. Okay, so that's going to reflect it down. It's going to reflect it down because my y value that I was given once I put in x value is times by a negative. So it's going to actually get reflected down. Okay. So maybe something like this. Okay, and then we know we've been moved up by four units as well. Okay. So what's that mean then for our um, vertical trans, uh, sorry, our x intercept. Okay, well, again, we can actually solve this and say, okay, well, let's say we've got zero equals negative log base 10 of x plus 4. Well, I can take 4 away because negative log to the base 10 of x. I've got this negative here that I need to divide by because we, we can't have that when we're going to do our loopy method, so it's just going to change our sign here. Okay, and then we're going to get 10 to the power of 4 equals x. Okay, or if you like, 10,000. Okay, so it's quite large for this one. Okay, is our value there. Okay, so we, again, we can see that our domain uh, is still going to be uh, 0 to infinity, not including 0. And again, our range is still going to be that negative infinity to infinity. Okay. What happens now, though, if we've got a negative inside our bracket when we sketch this? Okay. So, what's going to happen this time is we're actually going to have a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, we're actually going to reflect it this way because uh, we can't take a negative of a log but when we so when we put in a positive value here for x it's going to get times by a negative making the result negative okay and i can't take values but my negative values here when they go in it for our x gets timed by a negative and become a positive okay so we're going to see that we get a reflection for our graph so this time it's going to look something like this okay uh, now remembering though that our n value changes our x intercept so instead of being um, 1 it's going to be 1 on negative 2 or negative a half here it's going to be negative a half here okay uh, and we can also see that our other point okay, uh, which would have been 10 1 is now 10 on negative 2 which will give us negative 5 1 as well okay so we've had that reflection over and also that n value is that compressing factor as well this time for our domain though we're going to be from negative infinity to zero okay because we're coming all these values and again our range is not going to change it's going to be from negative infinity to infinity okay so hopefully that's a, a enough of an introduction to our graphs of uh, log functions to get you through some of your questions